Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and this is the PlayStation 4. So this thing is already four years old, and today we're going to be going over whether or not it's still worth buying. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So the PlayStation 4 was released back in late 2013 to great excitement among Sony fans. It has sold very well since then and has beat the Xbox One by a very far margin so far. I've had mine personally for about three years now and it's done really well, so buying used probably isn't going to be a big issue if you're looking to save some cash. There are multiple models of the PlayStation 4, being the original PS4, the slim PS4, and the PS4 Pro. The Pro is obviously the best, but for most people, either the original or slim PS4 will be just fine. And and so I generally recommend one of those. The PS4 Pro can output 4K and you're definitely going to see a lot better graphics on it, although it isn't as powerful as say the Xbox One X. As someone who doesn't have a 4K TV anyway, I honestly can take a pass on that in order to save some money and would probably personally go for the slim. The design of the PS4 is something that's both completely unimportant and yet essential. If you're like me, you're going to care about how it looks by your TV. And luckily the PS4 looks really good. It's a sleek machine and while I still prefer the look of the original PS3, Three, that's just a matter of opinion. The black one I have here is very classy and definitely looks next gen, even if it is already a four year old design. So rest assured that the PS4 will look great in your entertainment unit. If size is a concern, the Slim is quite a bit smaller than the one I have here, so I'd recommend that one. Okay, this is all good and fun, but chances are you're not buying the PS4 just for display. The real meat of this thing is the games, and this is where the PlayStation really shines. Since it's been out for already four years, there are plenty of games for you to sink your teeth into that are really amazing experiences and there's no question right now that PlayStation has the best exclusives. From Uncharted 4 to Horizon Zero Dawn, the PS4 has it all and plays everything pretty well typically at a steady 30 frames per second in most games, which is perfectly acceptable for console gaming. And what's great is due to the age of a lot of older games, you can find some really, really good games for super cheap to buy. Games like, say, Ratchet & Clank, Infamous Second Son, and Last of Us Remastered come to mind, or even Assassin's Creed Unity. That's, that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Graphics on this thing look beautiful, and it's hard to imagine them getting much better in the coming years, especially with games like Uncharted 4. All PS4s can play Blu-ray discs, obviously, and you can connect to the internet, which allows you to download apps like YouTube and Netflix. If you need an entertainment system as well as a gaming console, this will work perfectly fine as you would expect. An interesting thing you can get for the PS4 is PlayStation VR. I personally don't have it as it is quite pricey, but it allows you to experience virtual reality in your living room if you're into that. The base PS4 will often come in 500 gigabytes, but now they're selling a lot that start with one terabyte and that's what I'd recommend. 500 gigabytes for most might sound like a good amount of storage, but in all honesty, it has a tendency to fill up really quickly. Games like Assassin's Creed can often take up to around 40 gigabytes which adds up. And that's even if you have the disc copy, as the game downloads the hard drive anyway. This is in order for the consoles to be able to run it faster. Smaller games like Minecraft take up much less room, but it's important to keep in mind that when buying a PS4, you probably want a bigger storage size. I often find myself with a 500GB hard drive having to go through and delete games I haven't played in a while. Luckily you can always reinstall them, but even so it's it's a hassle. It's also important to note that in order to play online games you need to purchase PlayStation Plus, which is an extra $60 for a whole year, which is annoying but worth mentioning. You kind of need this for most people. The most you're going to be able to do without PlayStation Plus is play single player games or the single player campaigns on games, so if you're into that, I guess you'll be okay. If you're into couch co-op games, or in other words, playing games in split screen views with friends, this isn't the console for you. There are very few games that support this, one being Rocket League, but for the most part the selection is really disappointing, which is a pity. So if you're somebody who likes to have friends over to play games, I'd recommend avoiding the PS4 and maybe picking up a Nintendo Switch, or if you can find a really good deal, even a Wii U. It's also important to note that the PS4 is not backwards compatible, meaning your PS3 games will not be able to play on the PS4. Oh well, it's it's too bad, but um, if you have a PS3 anyway, then you just keep it around and play it when you want to. So those are a few basics of the PlayStation 4. It's an awesome console, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed with it. Whether or not it's going to be a better buy over the Switch or the Xbox One really depends on who you are and what games you want to play. On Amazon, you can find a PS4 Slim for under $300, which is absolutely amazing. I'm scrolling through right now, and I'm stunned by how cheap it's gotten. This is Amazon.com, so it is in US dollars, but even so, it's a very good deal. Yeah, I'm looking here right now, and this one has $300, a 1TB hard drive, and also comes with Battlefront 2. Despite me not really liking Battlefront 2 just for all the EA stuff that went down, it's still an amazing deal, and so when it comes to the PS4, I think it's hard not to say that it's worth it looking at the value. 
it's still really good and I think we can expect games to come out for it for quite a few more years. PS4 Pro starts at around 400 bucks on Amazon.com which is actually pretty solid. If you have a 4K TV or are interested in getting one I would definitely recommend going for the Pro model. It's only 100 bucks more and then you'll be future proof. It's also important to note that most consoles only come with one controller so if you are planning to play multiplayer games with friends or you know anything like that you're gonna want to probably buy another controller. So I'll actually put the best deal I could find from Amazon in the description down below there'll be a link to it if you want to go and buy it from there it helps me out it's gonna be a referral link you know you don't have to obviously but I'm gonna find the best deal I possibly can and put that there and hopefully I'll try to keep updating that so it stays current so in conclusion, the PS4 is still worth buying, and I'd honestly recommend picking it up. It's at a really good price point, and I don't think you'll regret it. Typically in these videos, when I do the is it worth it kind of thing, I'll usually say, you know, this is a really good product for some people. It's not going to be worth it for everybody. But for the PS4, at $300, I don't know if you can really go wrong. Is it going to be for everybody? No. If you're an Xbox fan, don't, don't get the PS4. It's not a big deal. But still, $300 is very, very cheap, and so I, yeah, I can't not recommend it for that price. I've really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of great memories playing games on here, and I think you will too. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Consider dropping a like if you enjoyed the video or found it interesting or found it helpful, and comment your thoughts on the PS4 down below. Is it worth buying, or should you go for an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch instead? Thanks again for watching. Consider subscribing if uh, you enjoy this content, and let me know if you want me to do some more gaming type videos. Follow me on Instagram at 91.tech and without further ado I will see you all next time.